Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a mid-month wrap-up for you only because I feel like talking about these books and my weekly reading updates have kind of stopped. I don't really know why. Um, I don't know. I, 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 hello, let's talk about these books. So I believe I have 10 books to talk to you about. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Actually, I have 11. I have 11 books to talk to you about. Two of them I finished like right at the end of July. And then the rest are just what I've read in August so far. So let's get right into it. So the first book I want to talk about is Earthbound. So I did mention this book in my, my last, I think my last weekly reading update. Oh my gosh, I freaking loved this book so much. This is a historical romance, but it's set on, I believe, like 1962 or 67, 60 something. Um, it is, so technically it's historical. It's set in Texas. We have an engineer hero, Parsons, and a computer scientist, heroine, Charlie. They end up working together. Parsons hires Charlie to, they're trying to get the first man into space, basically. And so they're working on that scientific journey. And so a lot of it, I really liked this book because while this is a woman in STEM novel, it didn't seem like too sciencey for my very non-scientific brain. I felt like it was very easy to follow. I really liked how we talked about science just enough for me to be like, okay, I understand this. I understand the stakes, but it didn't feel like overwhelmingly sciencey. You know what I mean? But by far and away, oh my gosh, I loved this romance so much. So we have our hero, he's a very stern, he's a typical, stereotypical alpha mellow type of hero, very stern, a little bit grumpy, isn't going to let anyone in, but inside he's got like a heart of gold, specifically soft for the heroine, Charlie. The two of them end up having like some pretty extreme chemistry to get, not extreme, they have some really good chemistry initially when they meet. And then uh, they <laughs> they decide to enter into like a secret affair, physical only, where they meet at this hotel, motel. And while they're there, they don't talk about work. And while they're at work, they don't talk about the hotel. So it's a very sort of like forbidden dynamic that is really, really fun to read about. But undoubtedly, they catch feelings for each other. And it was watching the hero catch those feelings for the heroine that was just like, a thing of beauty because he is such an alpha mellow and he, you know, everyone thinks he's just this tough, hard as nail guy, boss, and he is. But when it comes to the heroine throughout the course of the book, we see him really start to soften up for her. And it's just so beautiful. There were so many passages of this book that were just beautiful quotes. I freaking loved this book so much. And something very specific about this book that I liked is the moment when the hero is trying to decide or not decide he like he has this realization that he he might love charlie like he he feels like i love her and it, he is just this this precious man where he's so stern everybody thinks he's just so tough and so stern but he loves like saltwater aquariums he has a saltwater aquarium at his house and uh he's very proud of it there are a few scenes where he mentions that he sees like a co-worker at the fish store and that's where he s sort of starts to open up to this co-worker and <laughs> you get the impression that maybe he's not such a stern guy all the time <sighs> so when he has this moment where he's like realizing he has feelings for her his first thought is because she's never been to his house is i wonder if she'd like to see my fish if, if i wonder if i could invite her over here to see my fish and like it was just so precious and tender the way that he really wanted to share his whole self with her and it just it was beautiful it was this thing of beauty i also really liked how in this very you know, it's very unusual for women to have this type of job and she really has to work way harder than men do. I really liked seeing Parsons like stick up for her on, in the workplace and really admire her work and her intellect and everything like that. Like it was just, this book was fantastic. I loved it so much. I read this as part of the seasonally booked up book club. It was one of their recommendations. Uh, Dana and Kelly host that and it was fantastic. I, I loved it. I think y'all should read it. It's on Kindle Unlimited, too. Okay, so then the next book that I read was actually a reread, and it was A House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass. I read this book initially when it first came out, like, March of 2020, and uh, I gave it four stars. I remember at the time really loving the ending and feeling like it was pretty slow. Like, I found myself taking almost a month to read that book, which was very unusual for me at the time. Um, 
upon reread, I really found it to be very much the same. I think this book really has a pacing issue, and I think it needed a editor, <laughs> you know, like I know Sarah J Mass isn't going to really have an editor, but I really also struggled with how the world was presented. The initial world building in the beginning was way too info dumpy, and I'm just sort of like, I know you're Sarah J Mass, but this is almost inexcusable. All of that being said, I still really enjoy the story, and the ending is so powerful. <laughs> like, Sarah J Mass does ending so well that I think that that's largely why people sort of forgive the first part of that book. And it is. It's a really great ending. It's a really powerful ending. I love it. I love the characters. But like the first half of it, I'm just sort of like, Sarah J Mass, baby, what are you doing? You know? You can do better than this. She has done better than this. Anyway, moving right along. The next book I read is Eldest. This was a buddy read with my dear friend Jen from the Book Refuge. We are buddy reading this series to prepare for Murtag, the next book that comes out, I think, in October. I love this book so much. I've read this book years and years and years and years and years ago. Like, I feel like I probably read this series as it came out, the first book, 20 years ago. I love it. I, it's just so delightful. It's a YA dragon rider fantasy, epic fantasy. I just, I love it so much. This book was fantastic. I think so much of this book is done well in, in terms of like world building. I, I mean, like, especially reading this on like the coattails of A House of Earth and Blood, I was sort of like amazed at how he gets world buildings done so right, how he conveys his world to the reader. And Sarah J. Mass really kind of missed the ball for, in my opinion, on, in, on A House of Earth and Blood, as far as world building goes, getting that information to the reader. I think that Christopher Palini did an excellent job of that. I really like how he developed his characters in this book. I love the stakes of the world that are rising. I just, I think this book was fantastic. I loved it. I gave it five stars. Of course I did. Okay, the next book that I read is Marry Me by, Marry Me by Midnight. This is a historical romance written by a Jew uh, Jewish author with Jewish main characters. I've never read a historical romance with Jewish main characters before. I was really, really excited about this one, and I really enjoyed it. I think that this book leans pretty heavily into the historical element, which really is needed to give context for the characters and the stakes and what it was really like to, I mean, I'm assuming, to be Jewish in the Regency time and how that affected our characters and how that affects the storyline. I thought the characters were really well fleshed out. I thought the romance at times was... It, it, the, that's really sort of the main issue, is I felt like the romance sometimes seemed like it was moving a little too fast, and then other times it didn't feel like it was swoony enough, so I felt like the romance could have used a little tiny bit of fine-tuning, but all that being said, I really did like their dynamic. I thought they had great uh, chemistry together. It's sort of like a reverse Cinderella retelling, where uh, he is a custodian and she is looking to find a Jewish husband. Her, I think it's, is it her father or her grandfather left the business to her and she wants to find a man to marry her who is not going to be able to take that business from her. And so she enlists the help of our hero to go and find some dirt on all of these Jewish men who she wants to marry so that she'll always have something like to hang over their heads if they try to make moves on her business. And of course the custodian and our heroine end up falling in love and it was delightful. I gave it four stars. I liked it a lot. It was very unique and really well told. The next book that I read is Destiny's Embrace by Beverly Jenkins. I love this book. I really, really do love this book. I gave it five stars. Beverly Jenkins is a fabulous author. I, I love every single thing of hers that I have read, even though sometimes the stakes can be very high and deal with some really tricky, uh, sensitive issues sometimes. Um, they always feel very cozy to me, and I just love her writing style. I love her romances. This one was so fun and very unique because for a lot of the book, these two had almost like an antagonistic relationship where they were like butting heads a lot. We have Mariah. I think that's how you pronounce her name. She's our heroine. She comes with, from a very abusive mother. Her mother was very abusive to her, and she worked as a seamstress. She finally has this breaking point where she ends up leaving from her mother to go live with her aunt, and her aunt finds across the country this person who's looking for a housekeeper, and she's like, hey, this is an opportunity for you. Go have a fresh new start over there, and you can escape your mother and create a life for yourself. So Mar Maria, Mariah, 
she does that. She goes to have this new life, this new adventure, and she ends up working on this ranch for our hero, Logan, who is, you know, he needs a housekeeper. He needs, definitely needs a housekeeper in his life, and she is just the right person to do that. But again, they butt heads in the beginning, but they have this attraction, and it's just absolutely beautiful watching, watching Mariah come from a very abusive relationship and really sort of standing up for herself and being very much capable and not going to let herself be walked over. I thought that was such an interesting dynamic with Logan, who very specifically is also a very strong personality, and he yields to her a lot of times when she's, you know, trying to set all these ground rules into place for what's going to happen at the ranch and her role in that, and it was just beautiful. They had a lot of chemistry, really tender moments, and I loved it. Five stars. Okay, the next book that I read is The Lady's Formula for Love by Elizabeth Everett. This is a historical romance. This is another, like, woman in STEM. And I enjoyed this one a lot. I gave this four out of five stars. I think that this is an author that I'm very, very excited about and somebody who I want to definitely read more from in the future. I've re Another book of hers I'm going to mention is next. So this whole series is basically about a sort of society or group that was formed by the heroine in this book for women scientists. And at the time, of course, and I believe this is set in the Victorian time, you know, they're kind of on that edge where women are gaining a little bit more power and not even power, gaining a little bit more autonomy at the time, but still trying to get squashed down by everybody. So that's like a big theme of these books is the women wanting to uh, claim some type of freedom or agency for their own selves while the men at, at the time, some of the men are really trying to like squash that and keep women at home, keep women, you know, not allowing them any freedoms or rights. So that's a theme of these books, and I felt like it was really well done here. I loved the characterization. I think that this author handles the nuances in her character so well. I love, love, love the dynamic of a very grumpy protection officer who is Scottish, who is looking after this group of women scientists because they have an assignment from the crown that they're working on and they're in danger because somebody's trying to stop them, and our heroine who is a very brainy woman and she was married previously and her previous husband led her to believe that any of her physical desires were you know, gross or disgusting. So she's feeling very unsure of herself as far as like this attraction that she feels towards her protection officer. So it was really beautiful to watch the two of them. You know, she is feeling so attracted to him and he's feeling very attracted to her, but she's got all of this baggage from her previous husband who has led her to believe a certain way about those feelings and watching Arthur the hero really help her unpack that and make her realize that there's nothing wrong with those feelings. And it's okay to feel like that towards me. Like, it was just beautifully well done. I really, really liked this one. I think the only reason these books are not five stars for me is that I think sometimes this author takes a little too much time away from our couple is with doing things that are contributing to the overall backstory and to side characters, which are going to come up in future books. But I think sometimes it, it resulted in a, a pacing lag for me. So that's why these books are four stars instead of five stars for me, because they hit a lot of the things I'm looking for. But that element makes for sort of almost not like a choppy reading experience, but a, a reading experience that sort of loses urgency for me where I can't stop reading or listening to it, you know? Okay, so now the next book in the series, I'm going to talk about that next, even though this wasn't the next book that I read, is A Perfect Equation. So this was another book that was picked by Seasonally Booked Up. I, I haven't participated in their discussions because I've been just been reading so much slower than they are, but I loved this book too. So this book is also interesting because we have a heroine who is a scientist, you know, and she is part of this group she was ruined previously as a young woman because she believed that this young man, this gentleman, was going to marry her and ended up in a public ruination where she was completely ruined. So she has this really tarnished reputation and a lot of pain inside. And something that she does that I found so endearing about her is she has romance novels that she will read when she needs comfort or when she needs to feel like there is a chance of a happily ever after. Even though this happened to me, I need she escapes into romance novels for a happily ever after, which I just love and adore that so much. But the romance is between her and a gentleman who sort of almost caught her in this scandalous position. And he believed the story of the young man that she was sort of 
set out to seduce him and she's, you know, so he has this opinion of her that is not true. So most of the book, not most, but a lot, probably like the first half, is him getting to know her and because he's now the protection officer for them, getting to know her and having his opinion that he believed, that he very firmly believed because he believed the story of this young man, having his opinion of her changed as he gets to know her and as he starts falling in love with her. And it's just... It's so beautiful. There are parts of this book that are just achingly romantic and parts of it that just like ugh, make me hurt. I love it. I think this author is just very, very promising. A lot of talent and potential. But again, this one was four stars for that reason that sometimes her writing veers off into a little bit of unnecessary description or a little bit unnecessary detail that that sort of make the tension drop in certain scenes, which results in a pacing drop, which results in a lack of enjoyment. So I, I wish that she would tighten those scenes up just a little bit more because then I think these books would be uh, fantastic. So I really enjoyed this one, four out of five stars. Okay, and then I went on a T. Kingfisher binge. <laughs> I read Bryony and Roses, which is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I love this book. I gave it five stars. T. Kingfisher is just such a fantastic storyteller. I love every single thing that she writes. I really, really do. I think the pacing is great. This is a very short book. I think it's only like a five hour audio. I really love how this book had enough of the Beauty and the Beast story to feel very familiar and to get you really caught up in the, you know, the whole fairy tale telling of Beauty and the Beast, but with enough added elements to make you think this is very clever. Like, I love that when you can take a fairy tale or a retelling and make it feel very familiar, but to add just enough to make it feel fresh and unique and just really well done. And I loved this so much. It, it's, I mean, it is romantic. I don't think any T. Kingfishers I would call hardcore romance at all, but it's just excellent storytelling and I loved it. So the next book I read is A House with Good Bones, which is T. Kingfisher's sort of like a cozy horror. I feel like it's technically horror because there it is horrifying. There are scenes in this book that are very unsettling, but at the same time, her writing style is very approachable and she has a good deal of humor in her horror too, so that it never feels like just straight up horrifying, you know? Like, this is the type of horror that I can get on board with because it's, 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 it's horror that has, like, a theme or a message to it in a way that is, um, really, like, thought-provoking, but also it doesn't just rely on blood and guts and creepy imagery, although this does have creepy imagery. So the basic premise of this is our main character is a, she studies bugs, I can't remember what that is called, like, she's a very, you know, she's got education, she studies bugs and insects. She goes home to the south to visit her mother at the house where she grew up in, and she starts realizing that there are things happening in this house that make her think this this is not normal. Is this haunted? What is happening here? And uh, that's all I'm going to say, because it was really delightful and surprising, and I gave it three stars originally. I think it's probably closer to a four star, because looking back on this, I, I really liked this. There were parts of it that didn't hit quite as hard as I wanted to, as far as, like, we would go into, like, a really unsettling, creepy moment, and then we would get pulled right back out with some humor, and I kind of wanted to linger and be a little bit more creepy, but it was overall enjoyable, so I just changed my good reading, Goodreads rating to a four star, because I really liked it. Okay, the next book that I read is Comfort Me with Apples by Catherine M. Valente. This is a very short novella. It was only a two-hour audiobook. I adore Catherine M. Valente. I think she is one of the most gifted writers writing today. I think she is very inventive, very creative. You never really know what you're going to get when you open a Catherine M. Valente book. I think that she goes to very unexpected places, and a lot of the times I think it's best to approach her work a little bit blind to not really know what is going to come your way. So when I opened this book, the only thing I really knew, I, I thought maybe it was some type of domestic horror type of thing, because it starts out with our the main character, the heroine, who you know, her husband is often gone, often leaving, and she is, you know, she's so adamant that this man is perfect, that he loves her, that he cherishes her, that he adores her, but then she starts noticing things about his behavior that are very weird, that are odd. She finds things in the house that are unsettling. Like, it's just, it's so well done. There's so much symbolism in this book. 
and the prose is just stunning, like very, very deliberate, very specific, but also beautiful. And I just like, I, I, when I got, when I realized what this book was about, and I'm not going to say what it is in case you want to read it. And I mean, if you like literary fiction or literary fantasy, literary horror, I highly recommend Catherine and Valente because the way that she talks about human relationships and how she weaves fantastical elements into that is uh, unparalleled. I've never read anybody who does anything like that that really like leaves you with a gut punch and makes you think about why she's telling this story. I highly recommend you pick this up, but it was just fantastic. I gave it five stars. And honestly, it's one of those books that I read it and I can't stop thinking about it. It was fantastic. I loved it. Okay. Now the last book that I read is Burn For Me. I did a vlog, a reading vlog about this, so I'm not going to talk about it too much. This Hello, please forgive me. Uh, my memory card became full, so I switched over to my phone. But Burn For Me, Alona Andrews, Urban Fantasy, first in a series, loved the world in this, really loved the magic system, really liked the characters. I do feel like the beginning was a little too intro dumpy for my personal taste, and I also felt like the draw of our couple, which doesn't really reach a full romance in here, which I that's not a problem for me at all, but I did feel like the heroine's feelings towards Mad Rogan relied a little too much on her lust for him, and I didn't like how that was the driving force of her draw to him. So I talked about this extensively in my vlog, gave it three stars, really excited to continue on with this series because I thought this had a lot of potential and I really like the world that has been set up here. So, all right, there you have it. Those are the books that I have read for the first part of August. Thank you so much, my friends, for watching this video. If you have made it this far, please feel free to leave me a unicorn emoji, and I'll see y'all in my next video.